What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. Well, Arkansas losing another disappointing game to Kentucky. We talked a lot about everything on the walk and talk, but we want to get a little bit more feedback from you guys. Danny West is also going to join us, and we'll, of course, look ahead to this Auburn game. All that and more on Hogsports Live. Well, some interesting stuff today out of Chad Morris's press conference, and we'll get to all that. Of course, I want to remind everybody, plenty of ways to watch and listen on the show. Always streaming on Facebook Live and YouTube. Be sure to throw a thumbs up if you haven't done so already, and uh, subscribe to the channel also, and hit the notifications bell so you're notified anytime we upload a new video. Also available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. Throw us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts if you haven't done so already. Right now, we are the number one rated Razorback show on Apple Podcast. Hogsports.com, just $1 right now for your first month or 30% off your first year. We're not doing the 50% off promo. Arkansas doesn't break the streak. We don't run the promo. We're not doing a 50% off deal if they don't break the streak. So when Arkansas breaks the streak, we'll, we'll do 50% off the first year. Um, obviously, disappointing game. Now, I thought it was interesting in the post-game press conference. I asked John Chavis, you know, did you ever just consider running a goal line defense and saying, we dare you to throw to beat us? And the kid, Lynn Bowden, would have made some some big plays, obviously, in the passing game, but he also would have made some big mistakes. Some of the stuff I was saying in the walk and talk afterwards, he would have made some big plays, but he also would have made some big mistakes. The defense definitely would not have been on the field as long as they were, at, at the very least. And – I don't know. I just feel like – and Kentucky fans are upset with me, I know, because I said Arkansas should beat them, and I stand by that. Arkansas had the personnel to beat Kentucky with a stopgap quarterback. That kid's not the answer for Kentucky at quarterback, but he's the answer against a team like Arkansas or Vanderbilt. You know, they running like four or five plays and uh, and just eating Arkansas alive. I don't understand. And Chavis said that – you know, I asked him why didn't they do that, and he said that they did. Now, I don't know if you guys went back and looked, but I'm counting like six guys in the box – Okay, I'm not seeing a team that's run blitzing down after down that's just selling out against the run. And that's something that I said, if you go back and look at my video before the game on Thursday, I said that, you know, I'd like to see these guys just go after him and say, look, you're not going to beat us on the ground right from the get go. You're not going to beat us on the ground. And they didn't do that. They're running nickel defense. I just I don't get that game plan on defense. Still only had him to 24 points, but I mean, there's so much more into it than just the points. I mean, the amount of time that Kentucky's offense was on the field versus Arkansas's defense. So, very disappointing there. Uh, another thing that I'll, I'll say again, and I know Traylon Burks is, is just now getting, you know, kind of comfortable where, you know, they, they get him up to the line of scrimmage and stuff, but the guy has got to touch the ball. And I'm going to say this, and this is going to tick some people off, but if Houston Nutt was the coach at Arkansas, it would not surprise me to see Traylon Burks running quarterback. Matt Jones style. It really would not surprise me. They have got to figure out ways to get it in his hand, not just in the passing game, but also lining him up in the backfield, running wildcat quarterback, doing end rounds. I mean, he's got to touch the ball more than he is. He was targeted six times, which still isn't enough, but he's shown time after time that he is a difference maker on the field. What do you think would have happened if Arkansas had devised a similar game plan against Kentucky and use Traylon Burks at quarterback. You think they would have had success? Because I think they would have. Now, he's still very young. He's a freshman. we got to take that into account. But you got to get your playmakers more involved. And that's C.J. O'Grady. And, and we'll, let's say this also. Getting down to the goal line, Arkansas is the worst red zone team in the SEC, the worst touchdown team in the SEC when it comes to getting to the red zone. Okay, they're the worst and they were the worst last year. And so often, you know, we can point to a lot of the play calls. First of all, you know, why did they completely abandon the running game? But also the personnel, C.J. O'Grady, Trey Knox, Traylon Burks, Mike Woods, Rakeem Boyd. Those five players are in the game every single time you get to the red zone. They should be, I should say. They're not. Time and again, why aren't these five guys, if you're having trouble in the red zone, why are your five studs on the skill spots not in on the goal line every time? And that's something that I think is very frustrating. So we can point to the play calling, those disappointments. But ultimately, get your studs in the game. Feed your studs. Those guys need to be eating more. And 
you know, we can talk about all that stuff too, but again, everything's cyclical. You know, it kind of goes back to what Keith was saying, the cycle of suck, and Keith pretty much nailed this game on the head. Um, but the cycle of suck, you know, you have uh, – uh, I'm spacing on his name for some reason. Nick Starkle. Nick Starkle ultimately cost them this game, okay? We can point to what the, what Arkansas did on defense. We can point to the play calls and stuff like that. But Starkle was so off in this game, and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's something with looking over your shoulder because – and this is something I brought up to Joe Craddock in the press conference today. You know, when Nick Starkle came in for Ben Hicks – Nick Starkle outplayed Ben Hicks in the Ole Miss game. When Hicks came in for Starkle in the Texas A&M game, of course that was an injury, but Ben Hicks came in and outplayed. Why is the backup quarterback outplaying the starter time and time again? What is it about that? That's that's just very strange to me, but uh, Starkle just played. You know, I say he played his second to worst game, but he played a game that was probably equal as bad, equally as bad because both times he's cost Arkansas wins here. And this is what's crazy. As, as ticked off as everybody is, as big as a dumpster fire as everything looks and just total meltdown, they've lost games by four points, four points, and seven points. Four points, four points, and seven points. So that leads me to ask in the press conference, have you considered being more aggressive? You know, like we talk about halftime. You know, Kentucky's down there trying to score, and uh, I, I felt like that was maybe an opportunity for Arkansas to call some timeouts, get the ball with two minutes left instead of 55 seconds left there right before halftime where you're, you know, let's see if we can get a first down and then we'll try to, to score. And they, of course, didn't. They got a third and two. Which they were getting yardage on first down too often and not converting the down, which is very discouraging. I mean, that's what you want, getting a second short. Everything opens up. You can call any play you want. And Arkansas isn't converting. But right before halftime there, Let's see some time out. Let's see aggressive. You know, if you're losing games four points, four points, seven points, and you're not getting it done in the end, let's see a more aggressive approach. And that didn't happen, obviously. Um, you know, even, uh, you know, also with timeouts, you know, when Kentucky was down there, or when Arkansas was down there, and they had that fourth and long at the end of the game, you know, they get down there at that, what, 17 yard line. And they got four plays to pick up 10 yards, and they can't get it done there in the red zone, which is, you know, expected now. I mean, Arkansas is a terrible red zone team. Arkansas is a terrible red zone team. You should not expect to score touchdowns when Arkansas gets into the red zone. Just don't expect it. But when you're down there and you got this fourth and long, and you call a timeout to devise a play there on fourth down, and you burn a timeout, and, you know, obviously you're, you want to get your best play out there, but also – and it didn't ultimately matter because Kentucky just ran the ball all the way down the field. Um, but when you're down there, you burn that timeout. That's a timeout that you desperately need. You you had to have that timeout to be – if you could get them off the field in three plays, you know, and call a timeout each time, then you still got a chance to win again. But they burn that timeout. I mean, you basically, the game is basically over, and it, and it all hinges on that one play there at the end. So – um, a lot of things to point to, a lot of fingers to point out, and this coaching staff has to do a great job of keeping this team together. We're going to talk to Danny West here in a second because there is some news, obviously, with the transfer portal. Um, well, Devon McClure transferring, and if Devon McClure is transferring, or excuse me, leaving the team, and Chad Moore said he's leaving the team uh, to family reasons and stuff, and I, I don't know what you know McClure. I know he's you know married, got a kid. So I don't know everything about his family situation, but if he's transferring, that's a different story. And I've told you guys my thoughts on players transferring in the middle of the season and quitting the team. If it's a family issue, okay. But if you're entering the transfer portal and leaving the team, I don't like that one bit. I hate that rule. I hate the red shirt yourself rule. Of course, this isn't a red shirt rule. It'll, it'll just be a grad transfer, but yeah. We'll see what happens with that. All right, so I guess we're going to go to Danny West here. Danny, um, I told him I'd get to him pretty early. But Danny's going to uh, update us up on a little bit of the recruiting stuff. Where's his graphic? Where you at, Danny? Danny's going to update us on some of the latest recruiting stuff. Um, obviously a big recruiting w weekend this weekend. And some obviously discouraging news with Takias Crawford leaving the team uh, basically immediately after – the uh, the game was over. Trey Biddy. Hey, Danny. How's it going, man? Uh, busy day today. Yeah, yeah. You're on cloud nine, I assume. Everything's going well in Razorback land, right? Well, it's perfect. Yeah. 
Yep, sunshine and rainbows, man. No so, problems here. So, Danny, this was a game that Arkansas could have won. I mean, we're talking about a team with a stopgap quarterback who's very t- – I mean, he's a very good athlete. But leave it up to Arkansas to make this kid look like a Heisman Trophy winner and uh, and beat them. Yeah. Yeah, it was unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, man, my, my initial thought, and I'm sure you – you know, going into the game, I expected to see eight, nine in the box yep. every single time. Yep. Every time. We talked about it all week long going into the game. Mm-hmm. Make him beat you with his arm. Yep. If he can do that, more power to him. He, they deserve to win. You know what Chavis I said? Could have done Danny, it, I, asked Chavis, could have. I asked Chavis in the press conference about that, and he said they, that's what they did. That's what they did, huh? Okay. Yeah, I guess I can't count because I count six in the box pretty much in, in, a, yeah. in a nickel defense. So I can't count very well, but um, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. I yeah. didn't see eight, nine in the box. No, I didn't. I mean, I'm saying like bring the freaking goal line package in at this everything, guy. Everything, everything. You know, yeah. And and right from the start, the game First started out ten. about as well as you could hope, though. <laughs> I mean, that's a great start to the game. You know, at that point, you're like, yeah. okay, okay. Um, Kentucky fans are a little mad at me because I, I'm acting like Arkansas should have won the game, and, and they should have. I mean, when you consider probably should have talent level across the board, I feel like Arkansas has more playmakers. Even Kentucky's best wide receiver is playing quarterback now. Um, he's the fourth option at quarterback, basically. Maybe he's a better option than Sawyer Smith moving forward. But um, in that situation, Arkansas should win the game. They should. And that's not a slap in, uh, on Kentucky. They've had injuries and issues and lost a lot to the NFL draft last year. I still think Mark Stoops is a really good coach, but Arkansas should have won that game. And I think it comes down to it comes down to a few things: defensive play calling, uh, and 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 really just the structure of the defense. It comes down to Nick Starkle having an awful game and some you know just some questionable decisions about the personnel that you use. It's time to make Traylon Burks like. Things need to flow through that kid. He needs to be an option yeah. every single time. He should be touching the ball like 15 times, whether it's punt returns, catching passes, lining up as a Wildcat quarterback, lining up uh, you know, in the backfield even as a running back. I mean, he did everything for – heck, put him on defense sometimes. Put him at a linebacker. Get everything you can out of Traylon Burks because he is a special type of player. And I know he's young and you put a lot on him, but, I mean, what's the alternative? Just losing? I mean, you're Just still losing. you're still going to lose. Yeah. So. Hey, you said a lot of true things there about Kentucky. You know, they did lose a lot. Mark Stoops is a really good coach. Mm-hmm. They they have gone through injuries. Yeah. But the bottom line is, Trey, they're not very good. Yeah. They're not very good at all. That team was, it's kind of a bad team by SEC standards. Yeah. And Arkansas had no answer for them. You know, I, I said, Danny, that you're never going to see me on here just. Um, complaining about, you know, and throwing my arms up in the air about an SEC road game. But this is a different situation. This is a team that, you know, basically didn't have a quarterback. This is a – it's just a different deal. And so, this is a, this is a rare – there's a lot of things I did with this one that I said I wasn't going to do. I said I wasn't going to pick them to win uh, an SEC game or a road game until they actually did it. And I went against that. I picked them to win 31-24 in that one. And – so I went against what I said there, and I said I wasn't going to get uh, down or disappointed or act like it's the end of the world if they lose on the road. But in this one, I, I just everything I saw from Kentucky and everything I saw from Arkansas, and I think we got a little bit of a fool's gold from the Texas A&M game. But all of those things led me to think, okay, they're going to not only I, I thought that they would go down there, get a lead, and then be in a situation where they could protect the lead based on on everything that we saw, uh, and that just. Just too much, too much shooting themselves in the foot. Too many, too many bad decisions, and uh, a lot of this goes on the coaching staff, and a lot of it hangs on Nick Starkle. I'll tell you, the biggest loss of the night came after that game, Trey. Yep. Tykeus Crawford. Yeah. Obviously, we've got to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'll tell you, man. I talked to Ty after the game, after he announced his decommitment, and uh, just wanted to pick his brain, see if he's still coming up for this Auburn game, and he is with Calvante Dixon. He's supposed to be coming up. Saturday, so we'll see if he actually shows up. But I tell you, man, I I walked away from the conversation thinking, and I know how history says traditionally you don't see a guy come full circle, right? Mm-hmm. Right. But in this case, I'm not completely slamming the door on this. I don't think it's a hundred percent over. Now I'm not asking anybody to get their hopes up that he's about to jump back on, but I don't think it's over, man. I really don't. I think his his head is spinning a little bit. 
You know, if you go to A and M and see that type of environment for over a hundred thousand people there for a big Alabama game, and then mm-hmm. you you watch Arkansas lose again, uh, another one to a like I said, a really bad SEC team. By, in my opinion, yeah, you've got a lot of people in your ear. Give it some time. Maybe you can work back in there. And obviously, that kid's been up here a lot. He loves it here, so. I wouldn't give up on it just yet. Don't give up on Todd just yet. I'm giving up. Are you? It's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not holding my breath. I'll say that. No, but, I won't uh, either. Uh, I, I do think the timing breath. is interesting. I, you know, is that an emotional tweet that I'm decommitting? You know, r- immediately after game, I'm sitting in the post game press conference, and and that pops up. I'm just like, geez, wow, um, just another kick in the seat right there. So, well, you know what it reminded me of, and not to compare the two people as people at all. Mm -hmm. But you remember 2012 or 13, I guess it would have been 13. Arkansas had just lost to Mississippi state in little rock. I Mm -hmm. believe it was an overtime game where BA overthrew somebody last play of the game. They lost the game. Bad season. Right. Josh Frazier, like 10 minutes after the game commits to Alabama, Mm -hmm. you know, just kind of Auburn insult to injury there. Yeah, commits Auburn. No, no, Josh, Josh Frazier. Oh, Frazier, from, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right, that's right, that's right. Committed to Bama. Yeah. I yeah. was like, come on, man, <laughs> come <laughs> give on. it a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so we got 420 people on here watching live right now, Danny. And for those of you who are not familiar with Danny, maybe listening for the first time, uh, you can read all of his stuff at hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. Danny's the best recruiting man in the business. If, um, if you're not following Danny West on Twitter, you can follow him on at Danny West one and uh, does a great job for us. Most of his content is VIP. So if you're more of the diehard fan, then you want to make sure that you sign up at hogsports.com. Just $1 right now for your first month. And you can read about what's going on with future Razorbacks and, uh, and other players that Arkansas is recruiting. Uh, so be sure to follow Danny at Danny West one and be sure to check us out for just $1 for your first month at HAWG sports.com. So, Danny, what else is going on in the recruiting world? There's going to be a, a lot of visitors coming in this weekend. Yeah, uh, I feel like nobody even wants to hear about it right now, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, based on what, how things are going on the field. But you you do, man. You've got a really good group coming in, a really important weekend. I know it seems like all the momentum has shifted mm-hmm. in Tennessee's favor for this uh, Whitehaven trio now. Obviously, uh, obviously talking about Martavius French, Bryson Eason, and now – uh, to Mary and McDonald, all from the same school, big time four star linebackers, and they're still coming in this weekend. You've got Darren Turner; he's uh, also from Memphis. He's already committed to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nick Turner is one that I'm really, really intrigued by. He's a safety out of New Orleans, and you know we keep going back and looking at the defensive big red board. Mm-hmm. You don't see a whole lot of tremendous options out there at safety right now. Oh, no, they don't so, need safety; they're good. Yeah, yeah, they're good, right? <laughs> Um, but yeah, he's, he's already committed to Georgia tech. Uh You know, you can say what you want about Georgia tech. Personally, I think you ought to be able to, as an sec team, improve your, your status with this guy this weekend. So Mm -hmm. get him up here. This will be his first trip that I'm aware. So roll the red carpet out for him. I think he's a really good player. And, uh, who am I missing there? I think that pretty much, no, Dwight McGlother. Mm -hmm. Why could I forget that guy? Cornerback. Finally. Out of, uh. Yeah, Spring, Texas, Klein Oak High School. Is that an unofficial Arkansas visit? Top five. No, no, he's here for an official. Okay, that's good. Uh, you do have some some big time unofficials, Trey. You got Jashad Stewart coming in, obviously committed mm-hmm. defensive end out of Jonesboro. Takias Crawford, as I mentioned there, Kelvante Dixon, uh, Jai jo- uh, Jones, mm-hmm. twenty twenty one linebacker. His twin brother Jalen Jones going to be up here this weekend. You saw Kawan Parker, a 21 cornerback, earlier today tweet that he's going to be here. So a really good, really good group. We'll see how the game goes. I don't have very high expectations on this one, but no, I'm I'm really curious about the crowd. I mean, it would really help if they could get at least a decent crowd up here. I'm not expecting that. Are you, you know, Keith coined the phrase "cyclists suck" last week, and when you start, when you suck. <laughs> Things just get suckier, you know. You you get into a situation where you get eleven o'clock games, you know. So you're losing, and you get eleven o'clock games, which makes yeah. it easier for the road team. Hurts recruiting ultimately because some of these guys won't show up because it is such an early game. So the cycle of suck. You can credit that to Keith Grayson. Not bad, Keith. Or the suck cycle. <laughs> you call it the suck cycle. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? That sounds more like uh, something with a drain, though. 
Um, yeah. So basketball too, Danny. There's there's some basketball looks fun now. If we have something to look forward to, obviously baseball is always there. But you know, with a new coach with Musselman, a guy that really seems like he gets it has a lot of NBA experience and a lot of coaching experience. I think he's kind of the perfect mesh of a guy with a lot of experience who's a little bit older in his 50s, but also very forward-thinking. Uh, but you've, you've got some basketball visitors coming in, right? Yeah, big-time guys, too. Uh, we keep talking about them. Moses Moody, K.K. Robinson, mm-hmm. those two guys are going to be here. We failed to mention Devontae Davis committing over the weekend on Saturday, I believe. Mm-hmm. You also yeah. had an, a visitor in here. We talked to – Keon Ambrose Hilton yesterday, a kid out of Toronto, four-star forward, big-time guy. You can read what he had to say about his visit there on the site. But, yeah, man, I mean, it's very timely for Musselman right now because Arkansas football being in the state that it's in, you kind of – you're looking everywhere for any type of posi- – mm-hmm. pos- what am I trying to say? Positivity? Sure. <laughs> yeah. And – uh yeah, he's providing that for you right now. Really good group coming in here this weekend, and I think they're going to have some unofficials too, so be checking the site later in the week for some of those names. All right, Danny. Anything else to add about the state of Razorback football before we let you go? Man, I'm out of – everybody's hitting me up. Hey, yeah. what are we going to do to get out of this? I'm like, buddy, I'm out of answers. Like, tell, I don't tell, know. Them what, <laughs> tell them what – say what you want to say. Say what your answer is. Oh boy, you, I'd like to keep my job. <laughs> I hear you, better man. not do that on Facebook. I hear you. All right, Danny, yeah. appreciate you joining us, man. All right, we'll see y'all. All right, all right. That's Danny West again. H a w g sports dot com to read all of Danny's content, or you can follow him at Danny West one on Twitter, and uh, does a great job. Been doing it with us for, I guess, a decade. Maybe more than a decade. Danny's been with us for a long time. Does a great job. Has tremendous sources. You're not going to find better recruiting information. So if you're a diehard Razorback fan and you want the latest and greatest in Razorback recruiting, uh, then you'll want to check out hogsports.com, H-A-W-G sports.com. Just $1 for your first month. But if you're more of a casual fan, you want maybe some breaking news items. You want, you, you know, you're not concerned so much about what's about to happen. You want to know what has happened, stuff out of press conference and stuff. Be sure to sign up for our newsletter. You can easily do that just by going to the center of the page at hogsports.com and entering your email address and hitting sign up. You'll get a notification. You'll get an email for activation. You just click that, and then we'll send you every morning, we will send you all of our free content from the past day, okay, Uh, and and that morning as well. And also, anytime there's breaking news items, like say somebody commits or they announce a a football kickoff time or if there's a transfer or something, we'll send that kind of stuff also uh, in the newsletter. So be sure to sign up for that if you're more of the casual fan. And if you're more of the diehard fan, then you want to sign up for that VIP membership. All right, everybody. 23 minutes in. Let's see what people have to say. Dylan Evans says, we are garbage. Da, 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 da. Farmer's insurance jingle. Da, 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 da. I don't know if I can say that, can I? Jingle's probably copyrighted. (laughs) We are garbage. (laughs) I get you now, Dylan. All right. Ashton Nichols says, that's the last time I'm singing on here. Ashton Nichols says, can we talk about the fact that the defensive backs don't turn their head? No, we can't talk about that, Ashton. Defensive backs hadn't been terribly bad, okay? And I'll say this again, the way the game is designed, that's just how it is. The problem with this team is they allowed this kid to just run all over the place, okay? That was the problem. Defensive backs, I don't think it's that big of an issue. I really think they've got about the best group of defensive backs that they've had in years. Now, that might, be, that might not be saying a whole lot, but I think that's the case. What I would like to see is time to start getting some other guys a little bit more involved. Let's see some more of Jalen Catalan. Um, you know, Gregory Brooks, you know, you, you can talk about, like, get these young guys in, but, you know, Gregory Brooks, for as talented and most, most, as much potential as he has, He's not exactly helping them a whole lot in terms of playing well. Now, he's got a lot of potential, but that just shows you how difficult it is to be a freshman defensive back. And John Chavis made a point that I've said several times here. You know, when you're a freshman defensive back or a safety and you make a mistake, it's a colossal mistake because it's probably going to end up as, as a touchdown. The further you get away from the ball, from the defensive line, linebacker, secondary, the bigger the mistake uh, can cost you. Dylan Evans says, how is LSU number two in the country then? Um... What do you mean then? I don't. I guess I missed something, Dylan, if you want to refresh here later because everything's rolled off. Chris Barker says, fire Arkansas Razorback coaches, all of them, exclamation points. Scott Varner says, great job, Trey and Danny. 
Appreciate you, Scott. Cody Lama. Lama, how about a little something for the effort? This program lacks leadership, he says. Possibly, yeah. I mean, we can talk about youth and, you know, beating SEC teams and stuff, but it was that stuff that, I, you know, when I was predicting the, the Arkansas to beat Kentucky, I still had that slap in the back of the head, you know, said, don't forget San Jose State. Don't forget San Jose State. And there's no excuse for losing to San Jose State. And we can talk – you want to look ahead a little bit. Western Kentucky's not playing bad. They just beat Auburn – or, excuse me, Army. Didn't beat Auburn. They just beat Army. And Ty Story's quarterback and had a pretty good game. Now, what does this situation look like? I can't remember exactly how it plays out. They've got Auburn this weekend, and they go to Alabama. Is it Western Kentucky after that? Maybe somebody remind me. I think it's Western Kentucky. So, what does this, what does this team look like? We look ahead, and it's Auburn, loss, Alabama, blowout loss, maybe a blowout loss in both of them. And then Western Kentucky and Ty Story comes in here and pulls off an upset and wins. What does that look like? That's a scary thought for the staff. Real scary. Dylan Evans says, my point was they don't have a running quarterback. Okay. Oh, LSU. You don't, yeah, you don't have to have a running quarterback. What you have to have, and I've said this before, because everybody says you got to have a running quarterback. Because if you get a running quarterback, then you win. It's the same thing with like when when Brett Bielema was here or Houston Nutt. Everybody's like, we got to go to the spread because that's the answer. Because if Arkansas goes to the spread, they're going to be one of the teams that does it great, and they're not going to be one of the teams that suck at it, right? It's just automatic. If they get a running quarterback, they're going to have the answer at running quarterback. That's, and that's not how it works. You, you still have to get special players. It's not like the same schools, aside from a few, just keep – you know, Oklahoma keeps turning out transfer quarterbacks. But um, for the most part, the same schools aren't just having the top quarterback drafted year after year. It's about having special players also, okay? So what you have to have at quarterback – is either a dual threat who – and by dual threat, I mean a guy that can really run, not one of these guys that can kind of run and kind of pass. He either got to be great at one or the other. So a dual threat who's just an electric, take-your-breath-away type of runner or an NFL quarterback, a guy with NFL ability. And to have that NFL quarterback, you also need probably a little bit better line than you would have otherwise and some weapons at wide receiver. Okay, but you can win with an NFL quarterback on your roster that's not a great runner. Plenty of teams around the country do it. Okay. I know that like people people want a dual threat quarterback, and Arkansas hasn't had one since Matt Jones, a, a true guy that's, you know, in there every down. But um not a hundred percent that that is the absolute end all answer. Now, for Arkansas and this team, it might be. And I think we're gonna see KJ at the end of the year. I don't think we're going to see him until it becomes a situation where they don't burn his red shirt, okay? But I think we're going to see some of KJ at the end of the year. I mean, if you look at it right now, they're not going to a bowl game, okay? This team, I don't – they're not going to say they're playing for next year, and maybe they aren't entirely because mathematically they're not out of it, but they're not going to a bowl game. They're not going to beat Auburn. They're not going to beat Alabama, okay? Um, they might have a chance against Mississippi State if the stars align some kind of way. It's a home game, and who knows what kind of mood Kentucky, uh, Missouri is in, even though they're ranked now, because Missouri's not going to a bowl game. It's in Little Rock. So maybe some things happen. I mean, as much as we complain about this team, they do in a lot of ways play at the level of their competition. In a lot of ways, that's kind of what we've seen. I mean, Texas A&M, they – Really, a team that loses to San Jose State and loses on the road the way they did at Kentucky, do they have any business being in a situation to win the game at the end against Texas A&M? No, they don't. So that's that to me is more discouraging than encouraging with this team. It's more discouraging than encouraging that they can play with everybody. Uh, but, I mean, ultimately, again, four-point loss, four-point loss, seven-point loss. What if those games have gone a little bit differently? Think about how happy everybody would be right now. Anyway, ifs and buts, candy and nuts. We'd all have a Merry Christmas, wouldn't we? Robert Jean says, I'm angry, but will be Saturday telling my head, yelling your head off Saturday night, Saturday morning, you mean? Adam Mill says, Trey, how long do you see Chad Morris at Arkansas? Do you believe he's in over his head? Uh, I think that... I don't know. I don't think it's looking good for him right now, to be honest with you. I mean, it's easy to say that after a disappointing loss like that. Um, But, you know, 
Somebody asked me last week what happens if this team goes 0-16 in the SEC, second year in a row under Chad. I don't know, man. I really don't. I mean, right now, I think a lot of people are – I think there are some people that have gotten apathetic, but I think there are a lot more people that are just straight pissed. I think that a lot could be hitting on that Western Kentucky game because that's not a gimme. Dustin Hoofman says, would you risk losing a re- – I do think that there are going to be changes with this staff after the season. I could absolutely see that. And there's a lot of football to play, so who knows. And, again, we are talking about a couple of close losses, but I can't imagine that locker room not starting to point some fingers and stuff. And I don't know what's going on inside there. I tried to ask as many questions as I could, but the bottom line is Chad just doesn't answer questions, you know. Casey Rowland says Chave is – nope, sorry, that ran off. I need to roll down a little bit because they're losing them. Lance Lindsay said, what ha- what will happen to Razorback football? It's effed. <laughs> this program will never recover. It feels like it's uh, – it feels like that now, doesn't it? I mean, it really does. And, you know, we're talking about eight years now. This is going to be eight years of losing football at Arkansas. Eight straight years. Kelly Merritt says, "I'm uh, Tim David Long says, it's Miss State, then dub Western Kentucky. Miss State, then Western Kentucky. Okay. So what does this program look like then, you know? You know Ty Story is going to come in on fire, ready to ready to do everything he can to show these guys wrong, show these guys they were wrong for letting him go. How's K.J. Jefferson? How do you feel about him? I like K.J. Again, let's see how he looks in a game. I do think that a dual-threat quarterback could add a lot. And I, I'll say again, I want to see – I want to see Traylon Burks in a wildcat type of role and a guy that's getting, you know, uh, running, you know, at lining up at running back some. I think he could help you at running back. I really do. End around. I mean, I want to see the guy touching the ball like 15 times. Lee Crow says, if by chance Morris got fired, how difficult would it be to get a decent coach? I don't know. I mean, that's, that's looking way ahead. But um, – I think it's a it's a lose lose is what I think. If you fire Chad Morris, then you lose, and maybe if you keep him, I don't know. But I, it's a tough situation because it's year two, and you know other coaches are going to be looking at a program that has lost for eight years in a row, and the one year that they did have that was pretty good. Two years that they have are pretty good. Okay, Brandon Allen's last year they lost to Toledo. That probably should have been a ten win team. Okay, and they only won eight games, and the next year. Probably should have been a nine-win team, and they completely fell apart against Missouri, completely fell apart against Virginia Tech. That probably should have been ten and nine-win teams, and then maybe people would have forgiven Brett Bielema a little bit for that uh, for that last year. But that's not what happened. We can look back, but about ready to jump on the Petino Petrino ran, uh, bandwagon, says Steve Welton. Bob Carl says it all starts in the trenches on both sides. We suck on both. I don't know that Arkansas's defense should be on a, on a in a position. Now, I can give you the offensive line. Sure, offensive line isn't quite ready. Again, that doesn't give them an excuse to lose to San Jose State, and they actually played pretty well against Texas A and M. And I haven't, I haven't, I've, I've watched replays of the game. You know, I'd watch it live, then I'd turn to the TV, and it's a little delayed. And uh, so I watched it live in in, in uh, Kroger Field. And then I turned to the TV and watched the replay, but I haven't had a chance just because of all the travel. I had late travel and stuff like that, and with it being a late game, I haven't had a chance to go back and rewatch it, which I'm going to do as soon as I finish this. But um, obviously, I had the obligation to do this, but um, I, I do plan to go back and watch it. K- uh, Caleb Cragen says Traylon played a little quarterback in high school, he played a good bit of quarterback in high school. He did a lot of everything linebacker, quarterback, wide receiver, everything. I mean, I want to see him touch the ball more. I want to see him touch the ball a lot more. I want, like, in in his hands 15 times. Not just being targeted, but in his hands, I want it 15 times a game. That's what I want to see. That is one thing that I felt like they have got figured out in the Texas A&M game, but it didn't carry over here. Matt Jones wasn't a dual threat. You're right, Gerard. I mean, he was you, – you know, you might – you might compare Matt a little more to uh, Nick Marshall at Auburn. Matt was such a danger with his legs that he just opened up the passing game. Uh, so he was definitely more of a, a running quarterback than anything, than, you know, a dual threat. It's a good call. And I don't think that this offense would – I don't know. 
I wouldn't mind seeing Traylon Burks line up at quarterback a lot. That's all I'm saying. Kelly Merritt says it's a terrible hire. Should have been Norvell. He has more SEC wins this season than we do. Yeah. I mean, he has his program a little farther ahead, but um, you make a good point there. It is crazy to think about how, I mean, how many games they've lost in the SEC in a row, and not just in the SEC, but also losing to Colorado State, losing to North Texas, losing to uh, San Jose State. I mean, these are awful losses that Arkansas, you know, even even in the worst rebuilding year, it should just never happen. You can't tell me that Arkansas doesn't have better talent than those teams. I know they've got, you know, to rework the roster and stuff, but you can't tell me that Arkansas has worse talent than those teams. They don't. It doesn't come back to talent. Other games, sure. Okay, other games, sure. But that goes back to things like being more aggressive, you know, trying to take shots down the field, just rolling the dice a little more. you got to roll the dice more. I mean, we're talking about trying to get a win for Arkansas, right? And I do feel like the sentiment among fans is that this team plays not to lose, and that's why you have seven-point losses and four-point losses. Uh, Jared Jackson says, smoking, look his stats up. Uh, let's see. Caleb Cragen says, what if KJ comes in and just dominates the whole year has been wasted? Yeah, I don't, I don't know that that's going to happen. I mean, here's the deal. If he does, I don't think that he was ready early in the year. I mean, they're having to do a lot of things with KJ, like rework his mechanics because he get, I mentioned, you know, he's kind of got the hitch in his throwing motion. So there's a lot of things with KJ that had to be reworked and, you know, all the way down to his footwork, all of that stuff. He's just not one of those guys that came up ready to play. Like Bo Nix, for example, whose father was a former college quarterback and stuff. KJ is definitely just more raw but has a ton of upside, a ton of potential. I mean, he's a guy to get excited about for the future, but at the same time, is he ready right now? Do you want to burn a red shirt right now? And I don't I don't know that you want to do that right now. I mean, what are you really – what are you really salvaging by playing him in four games or playing him in six? You know, I don't think you're talking about him leading you to a bowl game. I mean, is he going to be at Alabama and Auburn? Clint Shiver says arm tackling is not going to stop the offense. No. Robert Gene says yelling and supporting on Saturday. Good for you, Robert Gene. I mean, it's tough on the fans. I know it is. It's tough on me. You know, I don't like covering a losing team, especially a team that loses every single year. And I grew up in this state. I went to the University of Arkansas. I know what everybody's feeling right now. I think that's one reason things like my walk and talk, if you haven't gone back and watched the walk and talk, you should do that. That's my emotional off the cuff uh, response to the game, like right pretty quick after a press conference and kind of gathering my thoughts a little bit. Um, but the walk and talk has been, has been very popular. And, uh, you know, that's something where – that's me combining my media, the media me and the fan me, you know, kind of talking to the fans, I should say, um, walking through the same door, as George Costanza would say. Mike Nichols says, please discuss the O-line. They were atrocious at times Saturday night. Tough one. So, Mike, I will do that, but I really want to go back and watch the game. And like I said, I haven't had a chance just because of the travel in the late game. Uh, I haven't had a chance to sit down and watch the whole game over again. And usually when I do that, I go back and focus on the offensive line. So, Mike, on Thursday, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Dollar DP says, people are worried about KJ getting hurt or losing his red shirt. So, John Stephen Jones, it wouldn't surprise me. It would not surprise me to see anything at quarterback. It really wouldn't. I don't think that John Stephen Jones is the answer with this team. But at the same time, if Nick Starkle is going to throw for what he did, what, 41 yards, I mean – Anything, whatever, you know, whatever, if, if that's the case. Ken Harris says Jefferson needs to be given a chance. I think it'll happen, but I, I think it'll happen with about four games left. Blake Davis says I would love to get Hicks to get Hicks's true opinion. He saw Morris come in with the system and start to turn SMU around. You know, somebody made a point, and I thought this was interesting, that uh, every place that Chad has been when he's left, they've gotten better. But they've also gotten better when he got there. You know, and I don't know that every coach can say that, and that's an interesting point to make because when he got to Clemson, they were struggling. Dabo was probably on his last leg, and they went 10 wins, and they took the program to the next level. And then when he left, they ended up winning a national championship. Uh, same deal at SMU now. 
You have a program that was in disarray. It took some time to get back. They ended up winning seven games when he was there, and now he's gone, and now they're in the top 25. Kind of an interesting dynamic there. Joe Alpe says, what about Spivey? I think that we're going to see Spivey. Um, you know, Chase Hayden has been practicing. He practiced last week. He didn't get in the game last weekend. There's been a lot of rumors floating around about Chase. But uh, I would like to see Amante Spivey too. I don't, I, don't, I don't think that they are getting enough production from the backup running backs right now. I just think there's been a drop-off after, after Devois. All right, everybody. Let's see what else we got here. We've got a lot of questions. I want to thank everybody for joining us here. Appreciate everybody. I think it just says so much when we have, you know, 450 or so live viewers on here, um, how much people care about Razorback football. I've said that before, but um, fans care. They're tired of losing. They want to see this program turned around. You know, we mentioned the word apathy, but I don't know if that's the case. I mean, they're, they're just tired of not winning and – I don't know. This fan base is is too strong overall to uh, to deserve what it's getting. There's no excuse for the state of Arkansas football. It's not all on Chad Morris, but a lot of it is. But it's not all on Chad Morris. It takes a lot of hard damn work to get this program as crappy as it is right now. It's a lot of people behind it. It takes a lot. And there's no excuse when you look at the facilities – that Arkansas has the um, the energy that's put in from this state, the support. This is not this is not Kansas, okay? And I don't mean to get Kansas people mad at me, but this is but Arkansas has been Kansas for the last several years, okay? And there's too much that goes into Razorback football for them to stink as bad as they have for so long. It's inexcusable, and if this coaching staff can't get it done, then something's got to be done. That's the bottom line. And I know at the same time you got to give them time, but there's no excuse for some of these losses. All right, that's kind of my final thoughts on it, everybody. I will go back and watch the game here in a second, and we'll talk about it more on Thursday. And, of course, you can go to hogsports.com and read all of our thoughts on that. Again, that's hawgsports.com, just $1 right now for your first month or 30% off for your first year. Plenty of ways to watch and listen. Always streaming on Facebook Live. Be sure to subscribe and like to the cha- like the channel. Always upload on YouTube immediately after. Subscribe. Hit the notifications bell so you're notified every time that we upload a new video. And share the video with somebody. If you haven't shared with somebody and you think somebody else, hey, they might like this. I hear people all the time say, hey, I see your video. Um, you know, and I'm like, well, share it with your friends. Tell your buddies. Uh, if you like that and um, so be sure to subscribe hit the notifications bell throw us a thumbs up right now if you haven't done so already Um, throw us a thumbs down if you uh, if you don't like it I don't care whatever just interact (laughs) just interact with the video prefer a thumbs up though always on Apple Podcasts also Spotify and Stitcher go ahead and throw us a review on Apple Podcasts not going to say anything else so go ahead and shut it down throw us a five-star review and uh, maybe say something nice about us if you want to give more than just a five-star rating we certainly appreciate that certainly appreciate all you guys we're going to be back with you on Thursday to talk about this Auburn game. I want to thank Danny West for joining us. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com and we'll catch you next time.